So the beautiful thing about working with these simple motifs and uh, components is that they are based upon the logic of a grid and how a grid is structured as a two-dimensional um, system. Now, the fundamental component to the grid are points. And points are represented by an ordered set of numbers called coordinates, and most likely they're Cartesian in nature. And you'll see that the grids that you use in Grasshopper and the grids that you use in paneling tools are two very different things. They might both look the same, but ultimately um, they are set up to do two very different things in terms of how the structure is, um, is um, recognized in paneling tools. So in the case of Cartesian points, or the points that you would be using typically in Grasshopper, um, you're referencing a coordinate system which is based upon, uh, in this case on the left, the xy plane. Now that xy plane and the points that reside on it um, are really constructed using the coordinate system of the world, what we refer to as world space or xyz space. But the world in paneling tools is not of the xy plane. It's of the uv plane, which is an abstract coordinate system, which allows you to step by units of one. Now, in the upper left corner, you'll see the basic unit of a grid. Its lower left corner being zero, and its upper right corner being one means that the space of that unit is actually between 0 and 1. Now, if any of you have um, participated in the past webinar on paneling surfaces or um, the, the, the use of um, advanced data trees, we talked about this quite a lot and talked about the concept of the surface as a two-dimensional UV space. Now, the space of um, of grids in paneling tools really mirror that same um, ideology. So if we open up Grasshopper and we bounce over to the vector tab, we'll see that we have an object called grid, um, which contains, or actually a submenu called grid, which contains an object called square. And out of this object are grid cell outlines and points. This is not the object that we want to use. This is the grid that is used by Grasshopper, um, relying on the functionality of um, Rhino's point objects. Now, the difference between what would be coming out of a grid in Grasshopper or a grid even in Rhino is that it's based upon, again, the x, y, z um, paradigm of, of point structuring. Now, when we're talking about paneling tools, it's really set up as a system which operates as a two-dimensional matrix. And that matrix is structured um, by these unit spacings. So if you see here um, our u direction and our v direction, at the bottom we have 0, 0. And as we move to the right, we have 1, 0, and then 2, 0, then 3, 0. And as we move in the vertical direction here, in the V direction, you can see 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So let's try to figure out what this point is where my mouse is. If you have a suggestion, uh, go ahead and post that to the uh, question uh, box. Let's see. Um, See if, if you guys are, can figure that one out. Yeah, you're right. So that would be 1, 1, right? So 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So the structuring of this grid by the spacing of unit 1 is a very easy way to understand how to orient, uh, orient yourself with regards to a seemingly complex structure. So points, and why they're really great um, 
for uh, working with the, the kind of uh, modeling uh, techniques that we're using is that they're really, really basic geometrical uh, elements. And because of the fact that they're super basic, um, they typically serve as the underlay for generating more complex geometric types. Now, since points can also be easily generated from, they're typically dependent upon other more complex geometric types. And we'll see that whenever we say, okay, well, let's make a grid. How do you make a grid? Well, you have to define a base point. So the grid will come from an origin by way of a certain number of columns and rows. Now, if, for instance, we say we would like to derive points right, from a surface so that we can then populate on the surface, that's also very easy to do because points are very easily uh, generated. Now, points reside within a specific coordinate system, and this is what is referred to as the space. Typically, this is the world, or the XYZ Cartesian coordinate system, but there are other spaces. And that's where paneling tools comes in. Because paneling tools helps you generate 2D and 3D cellular patterns and populate them over rectangular grids. But to do that, the paneling tools plugin has to add a little bit more information to those points than just XYZ coordinates. Now, the process of working with paneling tools is really quite straightforward. The first step is that you input some sort of reference geometry. This might be an origin point of where you want your grid to start. It might be a curve that you'd like to extrude a grid from. Or it may be a surface that you'd like to populate a grid onto. The second is that you create a grid using paneling tools. So this results in a grid of points, which are referred to as PT grids, that also have special names associated to them. And the last thing is that you populate the grid with design elements. Those might be curves, it may be surfaces, maybe even meshes. And at the bottom right, you can see the kind of um, framework um, through which this occurs. Number one, your reference geometry, number two, your grid, and number three, populating elements onto that grid or into that grid. So reference geometry. Reference geometry um, is the various geometry used during the grid creation process. And again, it might be a point, it might be a curve, the surface, etc. And point grids are the paneling tool grid, which is created and results in points structured as a 2D matrix. So as we saw, the, the points are always going to be organized as a two-dimensional matrix so that you can then populate that matrix. The structure looks something like this. So you have a grid of points, and the grid has names associated to each one of those points. Down at the bottom left, you'll see that 0, 0. As we move right, 0, 1. So we move up in V, 1, 0. Right? And you can see very easily how the indices are increasing and the, uh, you're, as you're moving further away um, in the grid, either in U or V. So in this case, G, um, which is really grid, right? that's the stand-in name, is the grid name. In the case of the point that's highlighted, 2 indicates where that point is in a row. And 0 indicates where that point is in a column. Now that grid in Rhino, right, if I were to select one of those points, you can see in its name properties, it actually has that name. So let's take a look at how that works in Grasshopper. We're going to take a look first at the PT planar grid component, which creates a two-dimensional array of planar points. And to do that, you have to define where would you like that grid to be in the world, i.e., what is its reference point, what direction should the rows be moving, the columns, what is the spacing of rows and columns? 
Now what is the number or what number of points would you like in row and column? 